Used to the city, now we got our own land Life's getting real busy, busy. None of it was ever planned Got the crib looking pretty, pretty. With a garden full of plants, plants. And we built our own committee yeah. From the bottom we advance yeah. Back to our roots, roots. Now we get back to our roots yeah. Put on your boots Put on. It's time to go take off your suit so. Back to our roots yeah. Yeah. Now we get back to our roots yeah. Put on your boots It's time to fun with Cheryl Swoops Right now Right now everybody what's going on welcome to another edition of back to our roots homestead today we're just kind of hanging out in the herb garden got a little work to do we're going to do some thinning of some plants that we started from seed as well as some starter plants that i'm actually going to be planting into these buckets today um, we're going to thin some other plants out that will eventually go out to the big garden but before we do that, uh, we've actually had a few people reach out and ask us what our soil consists of. And since I'm really not the brain behind all of this, uh, my husband is, I'm going to let him explain to you guys what his soil mixture is, um, as well as the fertilizer and all of that stuff before I put the plants in. Okay? Yeah, so the, the soil is three parts. It's um, black cow manure. It's um, miracle Grow soil, container mix, and peat moss. So it's, it's even, and you can see it's real fluffy. Mm -hmm. Soft. It's real fluffy. And so what, what, we, what, I, what I normally do is put that in in a wheelbarrow, mix it up, and then I make that, I call it my little martini. <laughs> my, uh, little fertilizer mix? Yes. So it is um, azomite, blood meal, bone meal fertilizer and a little garden line so you would put that on like like that and then you then you would uh plant is that enough yeah you can put a little more it don't smell too good either <laughs> yeah that's good okay so then what i'm gonna do is take um Again, I'm just going to remind some of you, maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't. Um, I have become a huge fan of sweet basil. I use it on almost everything that I cook. So the other day I went to Lowe's and they had a few of these starter plants. So I was able to pick up um, three sweet basil plants. And now what I'm going to do, God, they smell so good. I'm just going to take them out of this container, maybe. And guys, buy seeds. If you can get seeds, buy them because, man, some of the biggest companies uh, that sell seeds are out. They, they don't have seeds. People are buying this stuff up, which is an indication that a lot of people are starting to garden and farm again, which is a good thing. But it, it's tough to find seeds nowadays. So usually this comes right out, but we, we got quite a bit of rain the other night last night actually you can actually plant that right in that's what it's, it's, it's with this yeah and it'll just dissolve in the sand i don't like to do it but I don't either. yeah but you can do it like that so leave this plastic on too? no not the plastic but the the okay. it's a thing they make where it it dissolves in the yeah. thing you but know, i'm kind of stubborn so <laughs> i'm just gonna do that and to my husband's point i will say um for those of you that maybe have not gone shopping or out to Lowe's looking for stuff for your garden. Um, things are really, really scarce. Um, I was surprised that they even had these basil plants, but I was out looking for quite a few things that we we're trying to find to plant um, that we need for the garden and really couldn't find it. So if you find some seeds and you know where to get them from, I would suggest that you buy them and share the information where you're getting them from. All right, so once I get this planted in. Yeah, well, once you plant that, then I would, I'm going to go back now and put more black cow on the top of that so that the, the manure. Uh, I'm just going to slide it. Maybe they can see the inside of Yeah, so there. that the manure goes down into the soil also. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have three of these that we need to plant. Um, and I've shown you guys one of them, so I will 
just kind of put a little fertilizer in this. And I'm gonna move through this pretty quickly with the other two just to get them planted. And then I'll move over to the other plants that we're going to be fitting. I really did not know that you could plant this directly. Yeah, the soil. they build those now, but I don't, I, don't, I don't like it either. I like to put it right into the soil. Okay, but what do you want me to do? I mean, you can you can do it. You can do it that way. I mean, just go ahead and where you're comfortable with doing it. This thing is so soft. Yeah. There we go. That one was a lot easier. Yeah, so we'll get these buttoned up, guys, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so back. We got them planted in, and I just want you guys to see the difference. So this is, well, this is the before with the fertilizer and this is the after with the black cow manure so the only thing we have left to do is put the black cow manure on this one and then we water them in and sometimes i feel like i'm putting too much water and my husband's like no put more put more put more because you want to make sure that they really get set in really well in the soil and you want the soil all the way through the pot the whole all the way to the bottom to get so the peat moss will help retain some of that water so but the first time you definitely want it watered in well i'm get more water for this one because we still got to put black cow manure on it but i want to make sure these are good okay so what we'll actually do with the basil, again, because this is our herb garden we're in, we'll just, we have some cleaning up over here to do. This one um, was mint, but we're keeping it so we can um, use it for the seed. So, but we just got some cleaning up to do here, and then we will uh, find a spot for the basil. If you can see, you can stay there. I'm going to move this, and I'll just show them. So... This was some basil that we planted, oh geez, four or five months ago maybe? Yeah. It's, it's been a while, uh, but because we love it so much, I found some more, and when this is all done, because pretty soon it will be, I have some more to replace it. So we're just gonna straighten this up over here later and clean it up a little bit, and that's where we'll place this um, basil. You also have to learn, we also, try. Are planning on dehydrating some of it and finding a ways to preserve it so that you have it year round even though we can pretty much grow year round here at least eight or nine months out of the year we can grow which is it's a blessing for being in the south it is. the is. heat is sometimes a little unbearable but you have a long growing season zone 8b hot <laughs> um i'm gonna leave that one over there so we don't forget to put black cow on it all right, guys, so before I start thinning, let me just show you. Um, we talked about this lone squash plant before. It's finally growing. So we're actually going to, I'm going to thin this out as well and take the best one, and then I'm going to plant it into one of our blue buckets, and we're going to take it to the big garden. So I will be doing that later, as well as, let me grab one. It's time for these also. This is the new squash plants we planted um, a couple weeks ago. So we're gonna do the same thing with these, gonna thin it out, plant it in our blue containers, and take it to the big garden. But I wanna show you guys this squash. I'm not sure this one right here looks like it's trying to break. So I'll probably, when I thin it out, I'll probably go with this one. But I also wanted to show you guys, we put three seeds in each one of the cups and two of them grew and they kind of pushed the other seed out so i don't know if you guys can see that so 
I will probably end up using this one and when we transfer it to the blue containers that's what um, I'll be doing okay so we have All right, I'm gonna sit and just kind of talk to you guys about the different plants we have here that we're gonna be thinning. Um, and I'm gonna start with the greens, okay? This is gonna be better for me to hold this over here. So we got our Georgia collards and we have our, what's this? Morris collards, Morris right? Morris head. Oh, Morris head. What happened? I made a mistake and hit the camera. And Get down for a um so here's here's what I'm going to do. Cause usually these are separate, so I can just take it out and kind of do it, but with this way, I'm gonna have to just try and keep it together so I don't pull, pull it apart. You know what I mean? So let's do this. This has got a lot of water in it. You don't want to do that, just cut it. It's got a lot of water. Well, I know, but um, I got to get my clippers, though, to cut it. But if you guys, I want to make sure they can see. There's three different little plants in here. One, two, three. So the way we do it when we're thinning them out is really I just try and pick the one that's the healthiest, which isn't necessarily always the prettiest, but I like to try and find the pretty ones as well as the healthy ones. Uh, and that's not necessarily always the the taller or the bigger one but in this one what i'll probably do is i need to get my snippers but and sometimes it's hard for me to decide right so if i take this one out and i don't know i'll just take that one out for now and then what we end up doing is keeping this one and we'll move this one into our blue buckets and they'll end up going out to the big garden um, and I don't always necessarily pick the, the right one sometimes when we transfer them um, for whatever reason it'll they'll die or they won't grow but most of the time um, they end up growing pretty well so I'm not gonna sit here right now and thin out all of these I just wanted to give you guys an idea of um, the plants that we're going to be thinning out today. So these are all of our greens that we're going to do. Okay, as well as I'm going to move this now. we have here. I'll take this one. Some bok choy. Same thing. If you can see this one, there should be three. Yep. Yeah, there's one right here. Two, three. So for me, lots of times when it's like a single cup or a single cell, it's a lot easier um, to transfer it. But uh, I don't know. I think I'll try and keep that one or that one. Which one do you think? They're mm. all pretty good. Yeah, they germinated well. So I'm going to get rid of that one. And usually it's better to, to cut them. Because you don't want to mess with the roots, but... I'm just being lazy right now. Yeah. But I will go get my snippers in a minute. And then we only... We end up with one. So when we transfer it to our blue containers, it's a lot easier for me to kind of just hold on to the stem, flip it over, take it out, plant it like we did with the basil but i'm not gonna do that right now so we have some bok choy that we're doing i try to keep these turned so i can see um these two well this one's starting to germinate you see that little bitty one right there yeah I these are our red mustards it was two that didn't come up so i just replanted it so yeah yep so that one's starting to germinate but as you guys can see same thing i'm going to do with our red mustards and I'm just sorry, guys. This is on me. I'm gonna turn it around just so I can see my name. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the Swiss chard here. And I already talked about the spaghetti squash. We're actually gonna take those out today and take them to the big garden. 
Um, and then over here we have our um, dinosaur kale and our thousand head kale. And, those are and these are beets. That looks like a lot in that one. So I'm not going to pull anymore because I know he made that comment because he wanted me to go get my snippers. So just wanted to show you guys the different plants um, that we're going to be thinning out today. So I'm actually going to get my snippers and start working on this so I can try and get all of this done. And then once we get our um, squash planted and the other squash and some of these thinned out, we'll come back and show you the before and after. Alright guys, um, this is the tedious part of gardening, um, but it's still very enjoyable. So as you can see, we have finished thinning out the chart, the dinosaur kale, thousand head kale, the beets, um, again the Swiss chart, the bok choy, the red mustards, and if anyone missed it, let me just go back and say, so when we thinned them out, each one of these had, I thought it was like three seeds, but some of them I found had four and five. So we thinned them out where we only left uh, one plant in each cup because once they get to, I don't know how big, babe, but a certain point, it'll be time for us to take them out of here and move them into our five gallon buckets and put them in the big garden. So as you can see, and I wanted to save a few just so I can show you guys um, what I mean by thinning. So I've already done this side of our Morris head collards, and this is a Georgia collard. So these all have one, they should, they better, one seed, one plant. So if you can see here, there's like four. One, two, three, four. Um, I don't know if there's a certain method. Mine is just to really try to get um, as close to the soil as I possibly can. And then I just clip them and I leave one good, pretty healthy one. So I'll take that out and it leaves just one here. So I'm going to do the same thing. And sometimes they're um, like, honestly, they kind of look to be the same, like, height wise health wise so then i just try and pick and choose which one i think is the healthiest and for me personally i try to get the one that is closer to the center of the soil versus you know closer to a side but sometimes i don't really have an option like this one here that one is more over to the side than the middle so i'm going to take that one off um and these are all in about the same spot, but I'm going to take that one off because this one looked like the healthiest one to me. And this one, we're going to clip. And we're going to clip. And we'll leave that one. And actually, I'm going to clip both of those at the same time because I want that one. And same thing with this one. We'll clip that one. And we'll clip that one. And there you have it. Um, it's probably a lot more tedious because it's hot outside. But, you know, that's the process of thinning. And now we're down to one plant in each. And um, I'm going to sit these down. Or my husband's going to... No, I got it, babe. Because you're filming. I don't want you to drop it. So I'm just gonna put these back because they're not time. It's not time for us to transfer them to the five-gallon buckets yet. But over here, if you can see, I did the same thing with the squash. They each had um, three, two to three seeds in them. So I did the same thing with these. Just thinned them out, left one in, and we're going to take these now to the big garden and transfer them from these cups to our five gallon buckets and see what they do. All right, so we will meet you in the big garden. All right guys, um, long day already. 
We're heading to the big garden to plant our squash that I just finished sending out. And I just wanted to show you guys what the temperature is here in Texas, baby. We're right at 100 degrees. All right, 99 maybe, but we're right at 100. It's hot. So, um, really, we weren't going to do an update, but since we're here, I might as well just quickly give you guys a, uh, an update on what we got going on here before I go to the squash. The first thing I'm going to do is take you to the corn. Yes, this is our corn. I am so super duper stoked, excited. Um, just, I don't know. I'm so excited about it. Um, I'm gonna, babe, what is this? What is this called? Those are the tassels. That's what actually pollinates the corn. So when you, these are attached to the little strings that you see on the corn and each one of those strings makes a kernel. So, so I'm learning too, because again, I, we've never grown corn before. But I know I had some people send us some messages saying, wow, you guys are actually going to try and plant corn in your buckets. And yes, show them we're doing this in buckets. Just like everything else we have out here. And it is so far so good, thank God. Um, had a little wind last night. It kind of pushed them up yeah, over to the right. But I came out here this morning and fixed them. And also explain, in case people don't know why, because when we first planted them, they we actually had more space between them, right? Right. And well, then we had to move them closer together because... Well, corn actually self-pollinates, which is, it doesn't need bees, in other words. It pollinates itself through these. So this right here goes down to the, the corn will be down here later mm -hmm. on as it grows. And it this falls down there and pollinates that's what produces the corn so the closest they, the closer they are together the more pollen gets to the cobs and the and more that's full what makes it grow yes okay exactly. but i'm excited so i had to show you guys this that wasn't in the plan today but i had to show you guys our corn and since we're here i will show you guys the cucumber as well we actually have some cucumber that is growing um look at this check it out Look at that looks like a pickle that you could take right off and eat it and some babies down here that are growing let me see this and there's a baby baby right there look at that baby right there yeah so I'm not gonna take you guys on all of this but this is all cucumber right here that's starting to grow um our okra is doing great but i'm gonna go over here and that squash that was dying right there which one, <laughs> one we thought was dying and we yeah, keep trying one. to yeah yeah it's actually it's actually still producing squash. still producing fruit well look at this it's it trying to yeah so i don't know i don't know if they'll grow now yeah i don't either yeah but that's why we're playing. They have more. male and female. So this is the this is the female part of the squash, and the male is back here. So female, male. So it's two parts. Well, like humans. Yes. So, so we're gonna leave it though and see if we can't get some more. Yeah, grab it on there. But we are. That's why we're planting some more. Yeah. It doesn't want to stay. Well, it's a, this is summer squash too, so. We'll um, it like it's that. a different and this one we have gotten I don't even know it's dying <laughs> well it is dying but that means it's probably we've probably got it it's still out. it's still making okay. squash underneath this we've gotten at least 10 yeah so we have some in the house but here's this one that, that we ready. didn't think was I know ouch that we didn't think was gonna grow but look what we got here yeah, that one's ready I'm gonna just let me see I'm gonna take it off I was going to do this later, but since I'm here, I'll just take it off. Look at that baby. It's so pretty. Yep. Yep. The other ones are doing so well, too. good eating. So we will for sure give you guys an update later, but what I'm going to do is actually take... Am I putting the squash in this? Yeah, six of them. Okay. So That's spaghetti squash, so winter squash. I'm going to just sit it there. I'm going to put my cucumber in here. And I'm going to take, this one is, 
like my favorite, so I'm going to take this one first. Where do you want to go? Start with this one? Yes. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is just dig a little bit. Not too deep, but I'm going to take this squash out and transfer it to the bucket. So that we'll get us some more good squash. God, it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Fertilizer. And I'm gonna keep my little sign in it. And I'll come back and water it in later, but that's uh, as simple as it is, really. Yeah, when did we plant those? Do you remember? Well, the tw I want to say August 24th. 24th, yeah. That sounds about right. So they grow, they grew pretty fast. They did. So guys, what we're going to do is I'm going to go through and plant all of um, our squash in these buckets. And actually, when I come back, I'm going to plant them. I'm going to water them in. And when I come back, I will just give you guys a real quick tour of everything else that we have growing here in the garden and just to give you a quick update. All right, so we'll be back. All right, guys, so pretty much got them all watered in. This is the last one that I got to get watered in. But one thing I want to make sure that I say is we typically don't water our plants um, in the middle of the day or when it's this hot. We usually do it early in the morning um, or later on in the evening when the sun goes down. Because if you water them when it's, when it's too hot, um, the sun along with the water could actually burn the roots. So the only reason why we're doing it right now is because we're showing you guys how we've kind of done the entire process from taking them from our seed cups to our buckets, with the soil, the fertilizer, and the last step is watering them in. So that's the only reason why we're doing it now. Because I know somebody's going to send me a message and say, why in the world are you guys watering when it's that hot? Um, but we usually don't do it, but that's the only reason why I'm doing it now. So yeah, that's it. That's all we're going to do right now. I'll come back out later on. I need to just straighten up a little bit and cut some dead stuff off. But um, let me just give you guys a real quick tour. Um... I mean, I, I don't want to really talk a lot. I just want you guys to see the beauty. That's what I call it. It's so amazing to, for someone who's never done it before. Um, so to anybody that's listening that says, I could never do that, I don't have a green thumb, um, trust me, you can. It, it takes work, it takes effort, it takes confidence, and it takes a lot of want to. Um, and a lot of prayers, because we do that too, but I mean, I'm going to stand here and just let you kind of show them. We got corn over there, cucumbers, okra. I'll go right here just so you guys can see that this okra is, um, I don't know if you can see that from that far, but this okra is starting to grow. We've taken a lot off yeah, of them. Yeah, we right? have. We've gotten some, quite a bit off of here. And this entire row is okra. And this plant, when you see these flowers, you know you're going to start getting okra. So beautiful. And all those back there are buckets and bags that we've been making. Uh, we're close to 70 buckets ready to go. So we're just going to keep going to get till we get over 100. And we'll be ready to plant for the fall. Yeah. And again, squash back here. Oh, green beans. I didn't show them the green beans. We'll be having, uh, we'll be ready to eat some green beans in a little bit. These are all our green bean plants right here. Yep, green and bean. And eggplant. So, and um, I, I say the old garden back here, we're actually still getting okra off of here. We're actually letting a lot of them grow really, really big so we can just start getting the seeds from them. Right. But it's still producing as well. So we're still getting and some peppers. Up there. And peppers. For our jalapeno peppers tonight. Yeah. Jalapeno poppers. So guys, um, that's that's pretty much all we have for today. Um, again, thank you everybody for tuning in. And if you haven't subscribed yet, 
what are you waiting for? Um, please go subscribe, tell someone, share the videos, like the videos, give us, leave us comments, good or bad. Um, anything that you can do to help us uh, be more successful in the garden and share this information would be greatly appreciated. So until next time, everybody, please stay safe, stay healthy, and stay blessed. See, See you on next time. Back to our roots homestead. See you on the other side. Yeah, right now, right now, yeah, yeah, back to our roots, back to our roots, back to our roots.